Hello everyone and welcome back to Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate Prowler Only. Last time we started G1 and this time we will continue and complete G1. Our first quest we'll be taking is called Survival of the Biggest. Has us hunting a Geodrome and a Bulldrome. We've got our Thunder Weapon equipped because they both share a decent weakness to Thunder Element. And we'll go ahead and eat our meal and head out on the quest. All right, our first victim is Bulldrome. Bulldrome is very simple, just a little bit annoying because he likes to charge a lot. We fought Bulldrome before. This one is particularly large and I want to say probably a gold crown. You can see how much larger he is than the Bullfangos too. We might go for a mount here. I don't know though. I'm not a particularly big fan of mounts in G rank because the amount of health they do in G rank compared to low rank and high rank is just not that great. It is a fixed amount of damage. If you are in multiplayer, mounts do get a bit more um, usefulness because they do keep the monster down for a little bit and that allows for people to dwell on the monster instead of just one. Though if you do have like a super attack such as um, brimstone charge or something like that, then it is pretty good to use for a great sword user or something like that. Geodrome has decided to also make an appearance here, so we will be juggling two monsters at once, but I think we'll be fine. Bulldrome's fixing to go for a charge, so we'll wipe him out. And this, I believe, is where Bulldrome gets, like, incredibly long charges. Um, I don't remember that, though. I know he had them in high rank when we were fighting the Deviants. I just want to say he might be a little bit faster. Oh, obviously, he's faster. That's just a G-rank modifier. But I want to say it lasts for a lot longer. We'll see that, though. And the tackle, he just stops there. Bulldrome has such a simple moveset that it's kind of hard to see any um, differences in what his moves are, considering the fact that it is just charge charge turn around shake your head and then charge some more it's gonna do a tackle there we will actually get out of the way of that and go ahead and apply our big boomerangs here we will see what he's doing next just another charge so we'll wait him out he's not turning around or anything that's always what you want to do is wait after he passes you to see if he'll turn around before you actually start attacking again we get a snowman by the geodrome but bulldrome actually helps us out of that so that's pretty nice He's going to go ahead and go back into a charge. He is also poisoned, so he should be going down pretty quickly here since we we're just kind of welling on him. Here's that very long charge I was talking about. We're just going to kind of wait it out for him. I don't know if you can kind of bait him to end the charge. Like, I, I don't know if there's a way to do that. There might be. It sounds like something that Bulldrum can do, and he's actually running away. All right, here we are. He's tackling us again. We'll see what he's going to do. Just going to kind of stop that there so we can throw a couple of boomerangs here. We'll actually throw a third one. A little greedy, though. I probably should have at the very least committed a little bit faster there if I wanted to hit it. Because now we're getting a little comboed here. See what he's going to do next. Since we do have Ice Blood, it is harder to chain our dodges. So we definitely have to make them count. Of course, I could heal it off if I really wanted to. But I think we'll just wait. Okay, I'm just going to heal it off. I'm just getting hit now. It is, it, Ice Blood and Water Blood are the two most annoying blots for cats. Like poison and um, fire blot, those are not very difficult. They just make you take more damage, or not more damage, but it will make sure you are constantly taking damage. That's pretty easy to negate, and especially since Soothing Earl heals anyways, you'll probably just be using that no matter what. But for Water Blot and Ice Blot, you might, you know, think, well, I don't really need to heal this off and waste the fire of gauge, but they are just certainly annoying in that aspect. Of course, Dragon Bot is also another annoying one where it takes away your element usage. So you want to get rid of that, but that's just another one where you have to get rid of it and it's not something you really can live with. He's really just kind of walking around the map at this point. I'm not really sure why he's not you know, particularly interested in finding us, but that's fine. If I were being welled on by a small creature, I would probably walk away too, especially if I couldn't actually hit them very easily. A couple more boomerangs here. He's probably going to tackle, so we'll wait, dodge that out. And just kind of wait here. Again, Bulldrome's moveset is very simple. And he is now dead. So we'll go ahead and fight Geodrome. I guess I'll carve him up real quick so I can show off the weapon. All right, Geodrome. We fought him before. He's just an ass Velocidrome. You saw he could apply Snowman there. I'm not sure if that's something he can do in the earlier ranks. Uh, it probably is, though. Probably overthinking that a little much. He's just going to run around like Bulldrome here. A little hop there, so that's fine. Another hop. He really likes to hop here. Very jumpy, like a rabbit. And his little friend actually attacked us there. That's surprising. He's using ranged attacks now, so we're pretty fine to just kind of attack him with our own ranged attacks. That's why Prowler is so nice, since you can attack pretty effectively close up or at range 2. Unlike bow guns, where you have to keep a critical distance, cats do not have that, so you're just kind of safe to do whatever you want, whatever range you want. 
whichever is easiest to dodge with. We'll actually just only throw one there, and we'll throw one here too. We do get a flinch though, so that's pretty nice. This is where these powered up weapons that we actually work for are coming very much in handy, because if we had weaker weapons, these would take, be taking a little bit longer to actually kill. But since we do have the higher element and the higher raw, it's just very nice to be able to get these lower tiered monsters out of the way. Now, certainly don't take this as an expectation because the higher ranked monsters are going to be taking much longer just because we'll have to give their movesets a lot more respect and also, you know, just be having to deal with a lot more defense and health. These guys are just, you know, pushovers like they usually are. They won't die as fast as their lower ranked counterparts, but that's to be expected because they have higher stagger rates, you know, not as easy to pin them down either since they're pretty quick. We'll go ahead and try to throw out a Mega Boomerang here. It might actually hit since he's just kind of standing there. Very good. I don't believe many attacks can actually flinch us out of Mega Boomerang. Maybe the jumping attack. But we don't really have to worry about that too much. Just going to spit there, so that's fine. We'll just dodge that. It's just kind of being flinched at range here, which is nice for us. Uh, thought he was exhausted there. Looked like that Ice Glob didn't go out, but I probably just did not pay enough attention to it. Got and pop piercing here. See what he's going to do next. He'll throw a boomerang while he's getting ready to attack. He's going to spit out an ice glob. Pretty fine. He can hit his own um, teammates with the ice globs. It doesn't actually apply ice block to them. That doesn't happen until Rise, where they can actually be affected by blot. Maybe in Frontier, but Frontier's an entire beast of its own. So it will just keep throwing boomerangs at him. Another ice glob coming out at him. We will still da deal damage to them, of course, but the damage monsters deal to each other in Generations and Generations Ultimate is nowhere compared or nowhere as high compared to the damage they could deal to each other in um, War Ultimate. Remember, there was a quest, and I'm sure I've talked about this before, but you had a Rajing and a Zenogre in the Sanctuary Arena, where you usually fight, you know, Shigaru Magala or things like that. Um, what was I saying here? Oh yeah, the Rajang, if you left it in there long enough and fought it long enough, you know, just kind of running away from it, would eventually kill the Zenogre because the damage that Rajang would just deal to the Zenogre passively while attacking you was so high that you might as well just focus on the Rajang and it would eventually kill the Zenogre by itself without you having to really do much to it. Geodrome here is exhausted and limping away, so there's not really much. Again, he's not the most interesting point of topic, so we're just kind of talking about other things. In this game, there's a very similar quest to it. I want to say either the Zenoga or the Rajang is a hyper variant, but it, even they just toned down the damage so much that even if they were the regular versions, they wouldn't be dealing that much damage to each other. Certainly, if you left them for a while, they would be dealing a decent portion of their health, but not enough to actually take them out or even probably even take them down to half. Either way, hopefully, uh, Geodrome does die here. He should be getting closer to death as we speak. There we go. Geodrome is down. I'll go ahead, carve him up, and meet you back at base. And indeed, the bull drum was actually a gold crown. Pretty nice if we were going for crowns, but we're not. That is an incredibly arduous task, and that's not something I really am making a goal out of. We'll go ahead and look at the bull drum tusk, a blue sharpness weapon, 155 melee attack, and 140 boomerang attack. It's not even beating the Dread King Blade, which also has Fire Element on top, so not really worth your time. Geoprey Bayonet, 150 in both melee and boomerang, and a little bit of ice. Not too terrible, but our Snow Baron, I want to say, I will just look at it here. Where is it at? Snow Baron Stick S has a little bit less boomerang attack, but much, much, much more ice. Um, and I believe, yeah, just the same affinity. So nothing, you know, it's not going to be better since we are really just relying on element a lot here. Um, I believe we have looked at the Cutku Cutter, Cephalos Brus. I don't believe we've looked at the Gypsaros Glare. Or maybe we have. I don't remember. 160 attack, melee attack, and 149 boomerang attack. N not particularly great. It has the same close range attack as the Dread King Blade, but... We're not really interested in melee attack, we're more interested in boomerang. And the Daimyo Shears, I want to say we've went over these, but oh well. 160 melee attack and 145 boomerang with very little water. Once again, not really that worth it, and this one has a bit of negative affinity. Speaking of our Dread King Blade, we swap to that because our next quest will be called Water Fight and has us hunting to Royal Ludroth, which is the element that Lu Royal Ludroth is weakest to, Fire Element. Go ahead and eat our meal and head out on the quest once again. 
All right, Royal Ludroth number one. Um, like before, I don't think there's any particularly large differences compared to Royal Ludroth and High Rank and G Rank. We'll be seeing here, once again, very large. G Rank monsters are incredibly large, making it, uh, or giving you a little bit of a higher chance to get those gold crowns. Not much, I believe it's about 6% chance to actually get a gold crown, which is not a lot in the long run. Uh, you'll be feeling that a lot, especially when the monsters begin taking 10 minutes to hunt at a time. Either way, you know the drill. We're attacking this bunch here. That's going to be the best hitbox pretty much entirely. You can cut the tail if you want. I believe you can break the claws too. And of course, the sponge and the main will break. The sponge is the main. I'm saying the crown, not the main. Those do not break at the same time. You do have to attack the head specifically. But since we do have piercing weapon or a piercing weapon, I'm very much tripping over my words today. But since we have a piercing weapon, we'll be just kind of hitting that head a lot and making it very likely that we will actually break the crown anyways even if we're not particularly aiming for it this is going to tackle there he's really focusing on our pelicos right now so we're kind of safe to just attack him at range there's a little slam on the belly flop keep him at range this is a monster that applies water blot we've seen this before another very annoying um plot to have on us like i was saying in the last hunt so we want to try to make sure we're avoiding that as much as we can He's going to go after our Palicos again with that leap, so we're pretty fine to just kind of punish that. He'll turn to look at us, see what he's going to do. It's like a roll, actually. He's not going to combo with those, so we're pretty fine there. Belly flop, very wide lanes on that belly flop, so we need to make sure we're keeping the distance, remembering that, and making sure we're staying far away. For a couple of boomerangs there, we'll dodge out to the side. Thankfully, Water Blot does not make us only have one dodge. We do keep our dodges, it's just that we are very slow when we actually try to run. He's going to tackle here. He actually goes plumb over us, so we don't even have to dodge. Go for his face once again. See what he's going to do. Water spit. Stay at range. And I see the other Ludroth is actually appearing and going to fight us too, so that'll be fine. They'll actually, like I said before, kind of start dealing damage to each other, though it won't be very much. Here comes a tail sweep. We're actually out of the range of it, though, so we're pretty fine to keep attacking. Like the little lunge over there that didn't hit us. He's just going to kind of taunt at us here. I'm going to try and probably just focus on getting quick boomerangs out. That way we can farm our um, mega boomerangs. There goes the sponge, so that is now broken. We're still dealing the most damage to it from what I remember, so we're going to keep going at that. There goes the main, or not the main. I'm calling the crown the main. It is the crown. The main is on your neck, not your, not your face. But we'll keep going for the main, though. That is going to be our main focus gonna kind of attack in unison here so we want to make sure we're trying to bait the one we are attacking out of the way of it making sure we're not taking double damage from things you know we don't want to be combo constantly that would be an annoying thing to have to deal with i do have go fight win and mega boomerang or enough gauge for mega boomerang so i might actually try for that that tackle wasn't enough to punch us out and we actually got it out by the time he did the belly flop so we're pretty fine there here comes a hip check from the second one so we'll go ahead and kill that off Water Blot is going to, once again, be very annoying. I can't understate that, or overstate that. Here comes a Belly Flop. We'll just dodge it. Remember, it does have a very wide hitbox. And we will be hit by the tackle here. We're in a corner, so we want to try to maneuver ourselves out of it. Looks like the other loot drop is maybe leaving. No, he's just repositioning for another attack. Let's see what he's going to do here. If I could really get a go fight or a mega boomerang off, that would be very nice. Hopefully just the tackle here. He's probably going to roll here, which will knock us out of it, but we actually got it out in time once again, so that's pretty nice. This blue drop has fallen over, so we're going to actually do a lunge and a spin to the main. We did dodge a lunge from the second blue drop, so that's pretty nice. We'll get another one. Here comes the roll. Unfortunately, dodged way too early on that to actually get it, and our cat is throwing a dung bomb at our first blue drop. So... Hopefully, it will actually move areas in a few seconds. Kind of being a little greedy with my boomerangs here, but you're seeing we're not taking that much damage, so I'm not really particularly worried about that. Here comes a little tackle and water spit. Similar to Yon Cut Cure Gypseros, just from a Leviathan skeleton. And it is water, not fire or poison. Nothing really to worry about there. Keep going at this main here. Hopefully, you're limping away eventually. Uh, they're really... 
Unlike the bull drum last time, they're actually trying to stay with us. <laughs> I need to pay attention to the second one. It is just kind of catching me off guard. Because I'm paying attention to the one we're actually attacking and getting hit by the second one's attacks. So we will chase the first one off into this little forested area. This is the first place you'll meet Zenogre or other monsters like that. Keep going for that sponge there. We're getting quite a few flinches, actually, so that's pretty nice. We go to the left here. Comes a water spit. Very fine. And here comes a roll to the low, kind of left, kind of forward. I think that's a new G-rank thing where he can actually manipulate where his rolls go. And something that can catch you off guard, actually. Dude, he does next. Another hit check, so we're pretty fine. That might also go a little bit further because he is rolling out of that hit check instead of just sliding out of it. Does a water spit and then a lunge. Hopefully we can get a mega boomerang off here. That would be pretty nice. He is going to taunt. There we go. Good. He's going to fall over. So it gives us another opportunity for mega boomerang. If that's, this would hover in his sponge, that would be particularly great. Very nice. We'll have to apply piercing boomerangs once again, though. But he should be on death's doorstep. That's that little glob spit there. Here comes a roll. Be careful. For a couple more boomerangs here. We'll dodge to the right. Make sure you can't tackle us. The one boomerang. Go to the right. He's going to hit check into a roll. So we're pretty fine here. Keep throwing boomerangs here. Onslaughting him there. Here comes another roll hit check. Again, I don't remember if that's the thing he does. I have a very bad memory of the specifics of each monster attack. But certainly I do think that that roll is new. And it makes him go a little bit further. And that's meant to just throw you off guard. I'm pretty sure. But he might have always had the roll. I just don't think he does. It looks different. Here comes a roll. Just a regular roll, not the hit check one. Nice flinch on that. And there we go. First Ludroth is down. We'll go ahead and carve him up, and then I will meet you at the second one once again. And the second Ludroth decided to show up where we were at and actually start fighting us. So that's pretty fun. Uh, we'll just go ahead and start working for some gauge gain again. Nothing really too important here to actually commentate on since we've already seen the first one. Nice break already on the crown. That is actually surprising. Um, probably got clipped by a mega boomerang I threw before because the part has a little bit more health than just a couple of boomerangs. Go ahead and try a mega boomerang here. See if it'll work. Gonna maybe hope that boomerangs are round and hits him because that was a little bit too greedy. I think it will. Yeah. Saw the screen shaking pretty violently there, so that means it actually hit. Nice flinch. Another flinch. Very nice. Again, I just don't really have much to say about it since we've already fought the first one. He's doing most of the same things. The rolls, the lunges, all of that. We've broken the main again. Very nice. He, he might, I do believe there's a mechanic where one, or not really a mechanic because it's something that can change, but I believe the first one, whichever one has the number one ID, has more health than the second one. Sometimes that's different, especially in arena quests where they spawn independently of each other, where the first one has less health and the second one has more health. But if you notice one going down a lot faster than the other one and you haven't really spent too much time with them in the same room together, you know, where you actually can deal passive damage to them, um, it's most likely that in their quest ID, they actually have less health than the other one. And that's a pretty common thing if you actually look at the quest data. I haven't actually looked at the quest data for the specific quest, so I don't really know. But in general, in multi-monster quests, and it's another thing that you might see visually where one is larger than the other one. And I want to say this one is actually a little bit smaller. So that might be why he's having less health and less part break health, because he just doesn't have as much health as the first one. I actually got a topple with a bomb there. Very surprising. We'll go ahead and throw this Mega Boomerang here. Go quite a big chunk of damage to his health. Another reason that his parts are breaking fast is just because, like I said before, he was in the same area as the other one while we were fighting it. So he got clipped by some regular boomerangs, some Mega Boomerangs. I'm sure our cats probably poisoned him too, which was pretty nice. That's good for passive damage. Let's see what he's going to do though next. Here comes another hit check roll. Go ahead and just throw the boomerangs into his tail. Tail is very tough, so you won't likely be breaking it if you're not focusing on it. See what he's going to do here. Just a taunt. Probably could have got a mega boomerang out here. We'll still try for this one, too. He's just going to run into the wall. It makes it pretty easy for us to line up the shot. Unfortunately, he just didn't turn around fast enough. We get a flinch there, so we'll go for this mega boomerang. Hopefully, it actually goes off. Very good. 
Unfortunately, I didn't flinch him, and I just did not press B in time to actually dodge. See what he's going to do next, though. Here comes a roll. Goes very far. If you're used to how short the ones in high rank are, don't be. Um, you know, expect it to actually hit you. That way you get used to how far it actually goes. Here comes a glob spit. We're pretty fine to just kind of tackle him at range. And we'll see where he's going next. Looks like he's maybe just repositioning. Thought he was leaving. He's not. Uh, that lunge actually got blocked by the terrain there. And it moved him off to the right. Very interesting. And we've got Go Fight win again. He is actually at a pretty far range here. So he should be pretty safe to throw a Mega Boomerang there. He's going to tackle. Unfortunately. Unfortunate, yeah, unfortunately, he just decided, I guess, to leave the area. Unless that was just a regular attack. No, he was leaving the area there. So he did miss the first Mega Boomerang. We should be able to get a second one off, though. Try to position to a good spot where we can throw it. Let's see. Okay, there we go. There's a little roll there. So we'll just be able to actually hit the sponge with this pretty easily, too. Very nice. No flinches, though. If you're seeing how the tolerance to flinches is... Definitely much higher in G rank than it was in low and high rank. Here comes another tackle roll thing. Keep calling it hip check roll, but the hip check is a little different. He'll start in a slot and then he will go to an actual roll. A couple of boomerangs there. A couple more. He will topple over. We'll get a mega boomerang out here. Very nice. If we wanted to go for the tail, we would probably throw the mega boomerang at the tail, but I'm, I'm just really interested in getting these hunts done faster. Because they will take quite a bit of time if we aren't, you know, serious about it. Starting to limp away, which is pretty nice. Awesome. So we'll go ahead and do another spin. And there we go. Royal Ludroth and Royal Ludroth are now down. Go ahead and carve this one up and I will meet you back at base for our final quest. Alright, back to the hub. We will go ahead and look at our Royal Ludroth equipment. Again, not expecting too much from it. 140 melee and boomerang attack with 26 melee water and 20 boomerang water. Thing here is that you do get white sharpness, which increases your damage and your element damage. So that's pretty nice. I don't think it's going to be better than our current water weapon, which I believe is the Mizutsune. It might actually, no, the Cursed Cloud. That's our current water weapon. I'll do some checking real quick, see if it's actually better. I don't think it will be though. Okay, so just basing it off from what I remember, White Sharpness is not that much of a boost to your raw. So the 163, I believe, will still be higher, even with the Blue Sharpness on the Cursed Cloud. However, you only get two more Boomerang Water on the Cursed Cloud, which would definitely be lower than 20 um, Boomerang Water and White Sharpness compared to the Blue Sharpness. The Element Monster Fire, I don't remember exactly what it is, but I'm going to say it's most definitely higher with this one. The other perk to this weapon is that you get 10% more affinity than you do with the Cursed Cloud. So. Is it a bit of a toss up? Yes, we will probably go ahead and just keep using the Cursed Cloud until we get a better water weapon, probably like Mizutsune or something like that, since the difference is go isn't going to be that much different. Um, if we were doing time trials or something like that, sure, maybe you would want to use the Ludroth Pearl if something was weaker to water, but we're not doing that. We're doing a casual playthrough. So damage the highest ultimate maximum DPS is not going to be our worry here. So we're going to keep the curse cloud since it doesn't require any parts and we already have it. But if you do not, or if you have not fought a Matsu and Kusha Deora, then the Ludroth Pearl is pretty great for you to use. You know, it's not going to be that much different. As for the Ludroth armor, we will be going ahead and making that because it is our highest armor so far. So I'll go ahead and make some scraps for that and equip that armor. All right, and there we go. We are all kitted out in Ludroth armor. So we will now be moving on from, again, once we get into the higher tier monsters, we'll, be start, or we'll start to move on from our deviant weapons, which is pretty fun. Now that we've done all the key quests in G1, we'll go ahead and get our urgent quest, which is for a Baroth. We'll go ahead and talk to the quest tender and get the quest for dirty deals. Go ahead and eat our meal, and we will still keep our fire weapon equipped because, as with we've said before, Baroth does not take any fire damage with the mud on his body, but once we use our raw damage to peel off that mud, it's going to be dealing the most damage with fire element. All right, Baroth. As per usual, he just starts off slipping this little mud pile over here. Give him a whack and it'll force him up. Just make sure you don't bounce off that crown and they get it immediately hit by him as he's coming up. That is a little thing you have to worry about. 
Of course, Baroth's hands are his weakest body part, so that's what we'll be aiming for, but it doesn't hurt to go for the legs, because those are pretty easy and noticeable trips to go for if you keep going for those legs. Okay, we've got big and piercing boomerangs now, so we can actually go at them. I'm going to back up here. Remember, Baroth can apply mud or mud blah, I don't remember exactly what it's called. Snowman's called Snowman. Webbed is just called the web status, I think. And I'm just gonna say mud here because that, that makes the most sense, I guess. Um, it wouldn't be called mud man. That would just sound weird. Um, if, when we get applied with mud, just wiggle the control stick and mash A. That will get you out of it pretty quickly. If you don't wanna go through the animation of breaking out, go ahead and use your soothing roll. That will get you out just like it will with your web status or your snowman. Pretty easy to just remember that. He's just gonna count a taunt here, which is pretty nice for us. We are piercing all the way down his body, so we should be breaking off that mud pretty quickly. Again, we are only using our raw damage right now since fire element does not affect him while he is um, covered in that mud. And there we go, the hands are now broken and they are now vulnerable to fire damage. <laughs> I'm taking a lot of damage from Baroth here. His tracking seems to be a lot better than it was in high rank. Wonder where we hot fought him in village, and his damage is going to be much, much higher too. He's just kind of slamming his head down right now, so we'll see what he's going to do. He's going to do a tail flip, so we'll try and go under that so we can attack the hands. He's going to shake some mud off too. The more you break the mud off, the less the mud flies off of his body whenever he does shake it off. Bit annoying there that we did get hit by that. You can't exactly tell where it's going to go. I want to say it's set, but it did look a little weird when we got hit there. Try and chase him here. That actually would have hit us if we didn't dodge, so we're fine there. And I'm sure since it is G-Rank, he does throw a lot more mud clubs off whenever he does his tackles and things like that. So just another reason for you to probably want to use Water Element and try to peel that mud off as fast as possible. He is moving areas, gonna go into Area 5, so I'll chase him over there. Do have plenty of bar gauge for Mega Boomerang, so we'll see where he appears. He's not gonna do anything like Diabos and just kind of pop up at the ground and attack us, so we're pretty fine for that. As he charges towards us, we're going to go ahead and throw that Mega Boomerang out. That will get some damage off. Hopefully, as it comes back around, it'll do the same. And since he is just kind of shaking here, hopefully we can get our Mega Boomerang out in time before he actually get hit by Mudblot. Thankfully, we didn't actually get hit by Mudblot there, so that's pretty nice. And looks like he was moving away again, but he's not, thankfully. He's not going to waste our time with that. See what he's going to do next. Just a little tackle. Remember, that does shake off my glob, so make sure you're not immediately behind him because that can be annoying. Here comes the roar. Doesn't actually hit us, though. I thought it would, but we we're slightly out of range of it. See what he's going to do now. Just a tackle. We'll try to dodge into that. He did curve it, though, so we didn't actually get hit by it either. Just kind of doing tail flips right now, so we're pretty fine to just keep attacking here. You can see we're having a little bit of trouble peeling off that mud. Um, if you're using a hunter with, you know, decent G-Rank gear, or even a cat with decent G-Rank gear, would be pretty easy to peel that mud off, but right now we're having a little bit of trouble, or trouble, but this is a G2 monster, so that's why we're having that problem. Try and dodge into that there, but he did get flinched, so that's fine. See what he's going to do next. He's just checking more mud glob, so we'll go ahead and throw this Mega Boomerang here. Hopefully, yes, very good, we'll hit it. If you are hitting that crown, you won't be dealing as much damage, but you can break the crown if you have a blunt weapon. Only blunt weapons can break the crown. I think bombs might be able to break the crown too. I don't remember if there's a weird quirk with that though. Unfortunately, I do get hit by that mud blot again. I need to remember to go forward and not behind him whenever he does charge, because he's just going to constantly be shaking that mud off. I see we have now broken the mud off the tail, so that will also be taking fire damage. And the more we just break this mud off, the more damage we'll be dealing. We get a topple there. Very nice. We'll go ahead and just use the rest of our bar gauge here to throw a Mega Boomerang out. Remember, throw it at those hands. Those are going to be taking the most damage. If you pierce another body part, that's fine. And we've finally broken the mud off of the front side of his body, too. I'm going to do some melee attacks here since we don't quite have enough for Big Boomerangs. So we'll be getting a little bit more damage up there, but now that we have big boomerangs, we'll just go back to more ranged attacks. Looks like he's gonna leave that area now, probably to go get something to eat. As you can see, he is dripping saliva from his mouth because he is exhausted. All right, now that we have appeared back in his base, go ahead and keep throwing stuff at him. We have piercing boomerangs now. I don't, but this is not the place. I'm not even gonna say I don't believe because I know this is not the place he sleeps. Um, he'll sleep back where he was, you know, kind of just rummaging around at the start of the hunt. Remember, you can't get the towel off of Baroth too, and you can also break his legs even after you have peeled the mud off. 
he has lots and lots of park breaks and especially in the later games you can abuse that to get like points or things like that just by killing the mud off of him and waiting for him to reapply he's toppled over here so we'll just kind of keep throwing boomerangs at him very simple you know combo here we can do he's gonna roar so we'll try to dodge we'll get out of the range of it actually so we'll be able to counter him pretty easily Let's see what he's gonna do here good flinch and you can tell he's enraged because he does have the uh, steam coming out of his little crown there. He did just completely evade us by going out of the way of this charge. Little counterintuitive there, Barrel. Let's see what you were trying to do, but it didn't work out very well. Let's see what he's going to do now. Probably another tackle. Good. Make sure we're just make dodging the uh, mud globs as they fall. You can, of course, adapt those. And there goes the tail, very nice. As you can see, the other leg actually still has some mud on it, if I can show that there. It might have actually broke off while he was on the ground. It did break off while he was on the ground. So if he is in a toppled state and you already and you break a um, part that would usually topple him, you do not get the topple from that. So if you're really trying to be strategic with your topples, make sure you're waiting to actually well on the part that can break again so it can topple. And just wait for him to get back up before you do that because you won't waste your topple at that point. I'm very much finding roundabout ways to explain my point instead of just going straight to the point. Keep throwing boomerangs here. We're getting a little bit more gauge, and I think that's what we want to focus on. You know, I'm not really particularly worried about a part we're going for. You know, we, we want to make sure we're not going for the crown, obviously, but if we're trying to go for gauge, it's faster to just kind of throw boomerangs willy-nilly, and then use our mega boomerangs so we can get that chance, and this looks like a pretty good chance, too. He's going to tackle here, so we'll wait for that. Hopefully not get hit by the mud block, but we did get hit by it, so we'll shake it off. See what he does next. He's going to tackle us, though. You can be hit during that shake-off animation, so that is a um, perk to using your um, soothing roll, just to make sure you're invincible while you're getting out of it. Hopefully that does enough damage to stun him. It's not. We're taking lots of hits here, so I'm just going to go ahead and heal, since we're getting a little greedy here. All right, we've got piercing boomerangs that need to go back up, so we'll go ahead and apply that. See what he does next. Looks like another charge is going to come out. Wait for him to drop there. Here comes the mud globs. Since we were just kind of in the perfect pattern, it does drop where the holes in his crown are. <laughs> and the trade-off for damage here is that we are going to be taking damage ourselves, unfortunately, since the mega boomerang does take so long to throw out. I probably could have got one out there, and he might even do a um, taunt animation. He did not, and we'll also have to heal off that Elteroth's defense down that we got hit by. But we're pretty fine. He's going to taunt here, though, so we will throw a Mega Boomerang here. Hopefully the taunt will last long enough. Pierce up through his body. Very good. Another flinch. Very nice. Go ahead and do a spin on him. He's still not quite um, limping away yet, though, so we still have a bit more health to go. All right, here we are again. Hopefully we can finish the fight in this area. Not sure if we will. That's that little tackle there. And you, as you can see, he has all of the mud peeled off of him. I'm going to say maybe, maybe not 100% certain that this is a G-rate thing where he can actually keep throwing the mud off of his head whenever, even if the mud is broken off of him. Um, that looked to be a pretty large hitbox. I didn't think I'd be hit by that, but I was. He does, I guess, technically drag up the ground around him, so that would make his hitbox a little bit larger. And you can probably tell it by the sand that's coming up around his face while he does run. See what he's going to do next. Some tail flips. So we'll go ahead and throw a Mega Boomerang out. Hopefully we get enough time. He's going to do another round of them. So we'll be very fine to just get that Mega Boomerang out. Still not limping away. Not sure where he's going right now. Probably just repositioning for a charge. So we'll try and get some Boomerangs hovering out while he does the charge here. He's um, a little tired though. So it will be a little bit slower. And we'll probably combo on Mega Boomerang after this. He's going to turn around for us, but I think we'll be pretty fine. Yeah, that tackle is very slow when he's exhausted. So very, very easy to get out of the way of. He's going to do this little um, exhausted animation here. So we'll be able to throw another Mega Boomerang. Keep going for those legs, maybe. And he is now limping away. Very nice. So we'll go ahead, probably meet him in area one once again, and we'll finish him off. All right, here we are. Hopefully finished, Tom. Uh, we are completely out of our boomerang buffs, so we will just kind of have to melee it up here while we're trying to charge those back up. Thankfully, he is exhausted, so this is going to be pretty easy to do. Just do some spins on him and maybe some cartwheels, too. I think cartwheels are going to be doing more damage than the spins since we have no boomerang buffs. But it's going to be pretty fun since we're already close to him um, dying anyways. 
Uh, hopefully you don't leave again. He's gonna roar here. Hopefully we get our boomerang buff off in time. We weren't even in range of it, so that's fine. Go under him there. Throw a couple of boomerangs here. See what he'll do next. Hopefully, maybe attack us so we get some free time, and then he just goes into the tail sweep. I did not expect that. He's gonna go and just attack completely over us. We'll do a spin on his hands there. Very good damage going off. Throw a couple more. Hopefully, he's gonna do another round of those tail spins. And now, maybe, just maybe, we'll get a spin off on him, reposition out of the way of a charge if he did throw one out. Another flinch, getting lots of flinches, showing that he is very close to death. Couple more boomerangs here, and that will end it. Baroth is down, and our urgent quest for G1 is complete. So after we'll carve him up and meet you back at base, we'll be in G2. All right, back to the hub. We'll go ahead and look at our Baroth equipment. Probably will be a little bit higher than Ludroth, if I had to guess, but the weapon is not going to be too particularly great. 180 melee, which is probably the highest so far, but it's... Um, Affinity is pretty poor at 0% affinity. I think that's negative 20% affinity since we do have, um, I believe, critical up or yeah, critical up large. I'm trying to remember things. Boomerang attack is also only 163, so not particularly great. That would be what we're using it for, so not something we want to make. The Baroth Helm, however, is 124 defense. I don't like the look of the Baroth equipment. A lot of the early game equipment looks a little weird. And since we do have the luxury of not really having to worry about taking too much damage, I think we'll just forego that for now and wait for some better equipment and better looking equipment. Either way, we'll pop back up here and talk to the quest manager, or I should say the pub manager is her actual name. But we are HR10 and now have access to G2 star quests. Meaning we have access to the jungle, frozen seaway, deserted island, marshlands, volcano, and ruined pinnacle. I do believe we had the ruined pinnacle before. So yeah, lots and lots more key quests to go through next time. But we have completed all we really set out to do this time. Either way, hope you enjoyed. If you did, please consider leaving a comment below and maybe even consider subscribing. Until next time, bye.